welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside where guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I'm playing Modern at the request of Patreon subscriber Alex, and this is Jeskai Energy Control with a big twist. The basic core shell is still here, tune the narrative, Galvanic Discharge, Wrath of the Skies, the One Ring. We know this from the proven Jeskai decks in the format. But then, instead of playing cards like Flage and maxing out on Subtlety, which those decks do, we've got Monastery Mentor, one of my favorite control win conditions of all time, and Narset, Enlightened Exile. 4 mana, 3, 4. Creatures you control have prowess. That includes her. When Narset, Enlightened Exile attacks, exile target non-creature, non-land card with mana value less than Narset's power from a graveyard and copy it. You may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. This immediately reminds me of Kest Dissident Mage, a card that even saw some legacy play when it was new, just kind of a top-end finisher for a control deck to recycle all its cool spells from throughout the game. Obviously, it evocative of Snapcaster Mage, a control card ever since it was printed. But this one has some important differences. Number one, it hits like a bus. Kest is just a three-power thing. Snapcaster is a two-power thing. This has three power at base. But it also has prowess, which means if you tune the narrative before combat, it's a four power thing. Then you attack and tune the narrative out of your graveyard. Now it's a five power thing. Very easy to just kind of play this as a five power creature for all intents and purposes in combat. You also get the thing for free, which is not how Snapcaster Mage or Cast work. You can also cast a spell from a graveyard. There's not many cards in history that have actually seen play that reach into your opponent's graveyard and play their cards. We got all sorts of options here with this thing. Prowess also stacks, if my memory is correct. Monastery Mentor is born with prowess, and so are the monk tokens it creates. But they would have double prowess. They would have two instances of prowess with Narset in play, which means every spell gives them plus two, plus two. And then giving Solitude, Subtlety, Wandering Emperor, Dopes, all prowess as well. You can turn a game very quickly with this. Non-creature, non-land is uh, different than Instant and Sorcery on all the other comparable cards I mentioned as well. We can refire Teferi in the middle of combat. We can fire the Wandering Emperor in the middle of combat. There's going to be One Rings in graveyards. It's modern. There's They're going to be all over the place. Just... Cast something pre-combat, give an extra power, then cast my one ring or theirs out of the graveyard. I'm excited to play with this card. Is there a proven shell with better cards, most of them from MH3? Yes. Are we going to have more fun today than playing that deck? Also, yes. This is Narset, Enlightened Exile, Jeskai Energy from Alex. Let's do it. Spooky season is here. I can't wait to play with my favorite ghouls and goblins. But the real fear is the looming specter of high shipping costs on singles. Card Trader is here to suck up those costs with their innovative Card Trader Zero system. Card Trader functions as your personal P.O. box to buy cards from sellers all over the world and get your order all in one easy package. Enjoy Duskmorn, House of Horror, and the rest of Card Trader's extensive worldwide selection of magic and other TCG offerings. Use code BOSTONROLL for 5% off your first order. While you shop fearlessly with Card Trader Zero from CardTrader.com. I'm on the play in round number one. Hand is kind of mopey, but sweeping the board and then playing the One Ring is a strategy I could get behind. I'm actually going to keep this. Thundering Falls is selection. If I find a two in the narrative or a Galvanic Iteration, Galvan is that what this is? Galvanic Discharge, my bad. Then the Wrath can be ramped. Obviously, it needs help, but I'll take a land with a hand with five lands in it in most control decks, in most formats. Start with the falls, immediately rewarded. Put that on top. Now I could kill a one drop, probably leave some material behind for a wrath. Are there any one mana X3s in the format? Anything that a Galvanic Discharge wouldn't kill outright? Speaking of killing outright, Urza Saga versus Wrath of the Skies, not a matchup. The Saga player wants to be on. Decks that lead on Saga, though, is probably Amulet. 
a deck that I played last week on the channel, and it melted my brain out of my skull. Asuva, please copy Saga. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Destroy each artifact, creature, and enchantment. Okay, I will. Opponent was just telling me in the chat they're a big fan and said it to play me. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is what we're doing. And I'm going to pay an energy even though I don't have to. I get to leave that in the bank for later. Sploot. <laughs> I hope I didn't lose a fan. Have I told you on the channel that I freaking love Wrath of the Skies? Every time I get to play with this card, I'm very excited. I hate this card. Or at least I hate its play patterns in Modern. But, I mean, put you to zero permanent stick a one ring is quite a play pattern that I can get behind. Could still just die somehow because Amulet's crazy. But that was a huge exchange. I honestly would not be surprised at all if they did something like Amulet, play a tap land, play a second Amulet, somehow win. Packed for a Arboreal Grazer, put it into play, get four mana. I don't know. There, it, This deck can do crazy shit. I never rule it out completely. Grazer confirmed. I do have protection this turn. We've got a Growth Chamber. Picked up the Vestige. There's still no Amulet in the mix. I can kill Arboreal Grazer, but I hope that's not important. Doesn't seem very good. Teferi and Narset, here we are. What fetchable red sources do I still have in the deck with two steam vents in my hand? There are only two steam vents in the deck. There is one sacred foundry. There's a basic mountain. And this land can get sacred foundry. It cannot get mountain. I'm deciding if I want to put Teferi into play or Narset. It's probably Narset. Though Teferi and plus leaves me ending and discharge. All right, I'm playing Teferi. I'd love to stick a Narset and go to work, but... Having a face-up answer to Amulet at least gives me some comfort. And because I have the one energy in the pool from earlier, I also have an answer to a, a Dryad of the Elysian Grove. Spelunking. Can't bolt that one. We know there's a Vestige in hand, so at least two mana represented right now. There's the Vestige. Aftermath Analyst. Okay, that can trigger... I think I should probably just kill this before anything else happens. Sacred Foundry, zap it in, discharge this thing. Because if they follow up with an untapped two mana land and then immediately activate this, oh wait, it costs four to activate. Okay, I probably didn't have to worry about this, but I'm still just going to delete it. Yeah, let's get that out of there. Dumped Amulet of Vigor, Vestige, One Ring. And we're going into my turn. There are two subtleties in the deck would be good to find some of them. Lightning Bolt, Narset. Clearing Spelunking does let them redraw, but it does make them replay it as well. I think I can afford the, the tempo loss to get rid of that thing. Emperor is good against hasty primeval titans, but that may or may not be how this deck wins at this point. I could play Fresh to Fairy. I could play Tapped Steam Vents. I could just slam Narset and hope I don't die this turn. They didn't play a second land after the Spelunking drop. I think I'm going to do the same thing I did last turn, which is play Teferi plus make sure an amulet doesn't stick. And then I'll try to start actually winning next turn. Discard Basic Mountain. I don't think I need that this game. Okay, they're getting their card back off the Spelunking. But they did have to spend 75% of their mana to do this. The turf is in. This is 2, 3, 4 mana represented. They picked up the growth chamber, though. Okay. It's still four mana represented. It's just a different sequence. Saga. You got it. And the one ring. Okay. I have no particular response to this at this time. Other than being bummed out. Could have bolted them in response, but double bolt is an answer to a primeval titan. And I'm not really worried about this grazer as a card. A little worried about my ring dealing damage to me. Teferi could pick it up. Okay, subtlety in the hand now gives me a lot of comfort to be e aggressive. There are only three colors of mana in the deck. I can't remove their ring. It's time to deploy Narset. She's in there. What fetchables are left? There is a meticulous archive in the deck to go with my flooded strand. Okay, uh, I can plus to fairy or I can bounce Urza Saga. I think I want to bounce Saga. Though so plusing to fairy leaves me another answer to an amulet. If they start making constructs, I don't love that for me. 
I can cast Wrath of the Skies out of the graveyard, and I have one energy next turn. I'm going to bounce Ursa Saga. Bonus Narset. Just what we needed. I have not tapped my ring, because I would just have to go to discard and lose all the cards anyway. I can do that in their end step. And then maybe just combo kill them next turn with Narset plus outrageous amounts of prowess. And I can cast their one ring with Narset next turn. I have plenty of spells to get up to four power, and I could just chain their one rings for a while. Or, no, that's not true. That's not how that works at all. So it exiles the card, and then you make a copy of it. So it's not in the graveyard for any kind of looping, which makes sense, because then I could just loop my own two one rings and have them in a soft lock. All right, they thought of that. Uh-oh, Lotus Field's here. This is where this deck starts to get crazy. Hey, subtlety, I need you now. They have eight cards in hand. That's so many. Okay, Lumra, Bellow of the Woods. This creates an infinite loop if it resolves, so I'm going to subtlety it. I'm not quite sure if they're all the way infinite, but they're really freaking close, and I would rather just not mess with it. Left the Lumra on top. There's an amulet, and me without my, my shields up. Okay, end step. I'm going to do some stuff. Fetch for Meticulous Archive. I just don't want to draw it with the ring before I use it for scrying. Prismatic Ending. If I end Grazer, end Amulet, Narset's 5, I can have a lot of power and toughness on the board here. All right. Activate Ring in the end step. Look at that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to bolt him in the end step. Time to start dealing damage. I'm going to try to win, or at least put the win on the board this turn. Cool. I go to 6. Life total dwindling. Plus Teferi, because that's all he can do now. I think I will draw a boatload of cards with this ring. See what that looks like. Basic land is good. Invol Invert polarity is sick. It's like, that's my primeval titan. That's my Lumra. Nice. Okay. Prismatic ending the amulet. I don't want you to have that. Prismatic ending the, the monkey. Don't need that much red mana, so I'll use Sacred Foundry to do that. If I leave up blue, blue, red, and blue, blue, I can invert, invert polarity and counter spell. I only have one mana left after all that. That's not enough. Is there a way to deal 16 now? Probably not. I'll just hold my horses, cast their one ring out of the graveyard, reset mine. Attack, target your one ring. There's my copy, and this is, if it was cast, it was cast, even though it's a copy. Take the new one. I have protection from everything. They're going to 10. And I have a fistful of interaction. And Teferi did plus, so my sorceries are alive. Clean up step, probably just dumping all the lands. Okay, handful of spells. They're drawing Lumra. That I can interact with thanks to Invert Polarity, even if they find a Cavern of Souls. And I could just counterspell it if they don't. And they used Lotus Field last turn to get that into play. They had to sack two lands to do that. Still, it's Amulet. Weird stuff could happen. Weird, unpredictable, unspeakable things. Ooh, the second Lotus Field. The list usually plays two. This is exciting. There's a good chance I'm going to counter this Lumber and they just lose. Primeval Titan. I don't think I want to show them the Invert Polarity, because that is like a game changer if they build a plan around Counter of Souls in game two. That's countered. An end step, Wandering Emperor, which will make a prowess creature. It should be trivial to deal the final five damage from here. I actually just have it without anything else because their one ring's going to deal three to them. And I have five power in play. Okay, they got one land. I have a lethal attack and a handful of spells. Plus Teferi. I'll plus Emperor. Just get this done faster. EI. Uh-oh. Lightning Bolt to my hand. Anchorage to the bottom. Tune the narrative into exile. Cast two in the narrative. I'm just stunting at this point. The game is very over. Attack with my stuff. What cool spells are in the graveyard? Do I want an amulet of vigor? Is that funny or just douchey? I'll draw another card. And they're dead. Okay. Dicey because amulet can wiggle out of spots, but pretty smooth. Now the blood moons come in. Consigned to memory. Good here. Wrath of the sky is insane. Path to exile is interesting. I might want that. Engineered Explosives is solid versus Urza Saga and Amulets, but 
They have a bunch of three drops and two drops that matter and six drops that matter. Supreme Verdict is good if they get onto like the kind of fair prime time plan. Like if I blood moon them and then they just resolve a couple of six sixes, I do have to be able to answer that. Or if they get ahead of my wraths with Urza Saga. Casting the fire answers one ring. I don't think I want the Supreme Verdict. That looks like too much. Lightning Bolt and Galvanic Discharge are both kind of mediocre here. Prismatic Ending is a generic answer to Spelunkings and Amulets that I like. Polarity is sick. That can beat a Cavern of Souls. Solitude's really good. I'm just like pretty heavy against Amulet already. Maybe I could shave a Narset, because I'm not as willing to just slam a Narset on four against this deck as I would be against others. I want to be careful not to cut too many win conditions. I'm looking at Wandering Emperor next as something that could go. Two in the narrative does keep things moving, but I think I can cut one of those safely. The one of Lorien revealed helps me find my basics if I stick my own Blood Moon. Blood Moon plus Path to Exile is certainly a, a combo. A choice to put them in the deck at the same time. Okay. I'm going to bring in these cards. I'm a little lighter on win conditions, but my role as the control deck versus the combo deck is don't die, and then we'll win with whatever's left. I like this hand. It casts Counterspell. It can remove an amulet. Forest. They knew about my Blood Moons. Basic Islands. Nice. Now I don't have to think about whether I'm going to get Island or Plains with my Flooded Strand. I'll actually keep the Plains, too. This locks up my four mana for the One Ring, and I just have to still be alive when we get there. Generous Ent Cycled. That's a sideboard card, which I think is really funny. In the stock list, there's like one Generous Ent in the sideboard. Specifically for Blood Moon matchups, I believe. They got Hedge Maze, played it. Now they have me in an interesting spot. Do I clear the Amulet and think that's good enough, or do I hold up Counterspell? I think I'd rather leave up Counterspell. And then I can clear the Amulet while still leaving up Counterspell next turn. A Simic Growth Chamber floating a green off of Hedge Maze. It's a value. Picked up the Hedge Maze. Definitely glad I left up Counterspell. I guess they wouldn't have been able to cast that if I took the Amulet, but... Don't get ringed. First rule of modern. Don't get ringed if you can avoid it. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Well. That's interesting. I could slam it, or I could continue with my plan of removing the Amulet and then holding up Counterspell. Yeah, I think I'm going to stay chill in here. See what their follow-up is. Edge Maze Pass would be a fine follow-up for me. If they didn't have Basic Forest in play already, I might have slammed the Blood Moon, but knowing that they can mostly play through it. They fetch a Basic Island. I'm more interested in casting Counterspell after Blood Moon than I am in casting Solitude. Okay, the moon hit their eye like a big pizza pie. Can this basic forest carry the game? Ah, uh, sandbag to second one. Had me on the ropes the whole time. If I draw a land right now and can play Mentor with Counterspell up, I'm going to be so hyped. Okay. EI to hit a land drop, or I could just stick the one ring. It's modern, folks. <laughs> stick the one ring. If that's in there. Can I crank up a land drop? Yes, indeed. Mountain's in. Now I'm ready to play Mentor with Counterspell back up next turn. Shields are currently down. Kind of. And I can... Pitch Mentor to Solitude to make sure I don't die to some random thing here, but six mana is when most of the magic happens in their deck. Subtlety as well. Got my land, got my Mentor, and I'll pass with a bunch of interaction available, and then next turn I can EI into the Mentor. This is one of my favorite feelings in gaming. Having Monastery Mentor in play with a Counterspell up. Hmm, Chef's Kiss. You cannot have that. Now I've got the Monks. Clocks even faster. I don't know if I ever have, in my experience playing Magic, had One Ring and Mentor in play at the same time. We got the GGs in the chat. The sideboard coming in big here. I'm going to keep casting spells till they actually concede, but they did say GG. Okay, uh, I'm going to put Mountain in my hand, Blood Moon on the bottom, Exile Plains. Basic Plains in play. I don't really need one blue mana up. I said they didn't expect moon from a three color deck. Uh, the chess guy control decks do play blood moon. Just putting that out there for folks who want to be in tune with the modern metagame and stuff. That's not a rub in to my opponent. Just a you know, 
education for everyone involved. I, I could bounce Blood Moon with Teferi, which lets me hold up consigned to memory. I'm just going to plus Teferi, though, and pass. I have Subtlety. Their deck's full of creatures. Even if a Primeval Titan resolves, they just tutor two mountains. And Mentor still probably beats it. Yeah, Verdant Catacombs pass is all they got. The race is on. Monastery Mentor versus my own One Ring. Spoiler, I'm going to win the race. They tune the narrative. Glorian revealed. Basic Island. I just need to cast any spell to win. I will cast this Lorian Revealed. And then this should be a lethal. And even if it's not, I can still Path to Exile, one of the monks that didn't attack this turn. Exaxes. GG. Monastery Mentor Gaming. Feels good, man. On to the next round. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks. And groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. I'm on the play in round number two. I'm going to keep my hand, basically Island Ponder. I'm in. Now I have a decision to make, which is, do I want to have access to Wrath of the Skies for two on turn two? If I want that option, I have to Shock and Hallowed Fountain on turn one. Or I could take it slow, just play the island, and whatever happens, happens. I think being on the play, I can afford to take a turn off here. I also mold a five, and I have two pieces of pitch interaction in hand. Yavamaya. Boreal Druid. Okay, so this is some sort of Eldrazi strategy. I suddenly regret not playing the Hallowed Fountain. Come on, Red Source, solve it all. Oof. All right. Well, not ideal. I did find a replacement blue card if they shove, like, Thought Not Seer or something right now. But I would still rather answer that with Wrath of the Skies. Oh my god. Come on, Wrath of the Skies. White Source, don't fail me now. Malevolent Rumble. They're rumbling over there. Thought Not Seer... Blade of the Blood Chief. Okay, so this is like Hardened Scales, Eldrazi? Oh no, this is the Brute Scale combo. No, no, I, I see what's going on now. All right. I'm with it. I caught up. This deck is in my queue to play, by the way. White Source right now probably ends the game. White Source off the top, please, deck. Ugh! Life is pain. Okay, so I'm going to have to pitch Subtlety to Subtlety this Slot Not Seer. Turn the narrative is a lot worse than Ponder in terms of actually selecting for cards it just gets you velocity rather than this will certainly help find me my next land Myco spawn fudge that's so much worse for me than thon arts here would have been drowsy temple sowing Myco spawn at least i didn't have to counter that one white source still pretty good here last chance for that to be true on top white source off the top please oh my god okay well we're going to eat a big pile of poop, thanks to just missing land drops. I guess I'm discarding one of these lightning bolts. The good news is, Wrath of the Skies is still really good. Even at this point, they could tutor Blade of the Blood Chief here. I have Solitude and Subtlety that can interact with their combo. Like I said, the Gardens. Okay. I think I have to Subtlety this. I don't want them to know what I'm cooking with. They bottom the Thought Not Seer. Don't want that one anymore. That's sick. Evoking Subtlety triggers Blade of the Blood Chief. It doesn't matter because nothing's on it currently, but that is sick. Five damages. Gonna have to take them. Deck. Still. White Source, please. Oh my god. <laughs> we might just die to the Mopey Beats. They can sack the spawn at any point to make Boreal Druid bigger. That's the thing there is. Okay, they're attacking with Sowing Myco Spawn. And not the other things. That buys me some time. Deck, please. I'm begging you, deck. Oh my goodness. Okay. My prayers were answered. I can't kill Sewing Myco Spawn here. I can't kill every other card they have. That's probably worth it. And I don't need to leave mana up. I will leave an energy in the pool. A bonus one. Ooh, a response. What is this? Court of Calling? What's happening? Oh, they're gonna... Eldrazi command in response. That's powerful. 
or they're going to float the mana, then do it afterwards. And then they have the blade that can go insane. That's a cool interaction. But the blade's gone, so that doesn't actually matter. They're just going to have a bunch of Eldrazi. Okay. The blade is gone. They have a bunch of mana floating. They can make a bunch of zero ones and see a lot of cards. And I still have the Solitude as an emergency. Follow-up can pitch the Wandering Emperor and still have Wrath available for next turn. They're making five homies and scrying five, drawing one. That makes sense why they didn't attack with the Mana Dorks that turn. Which makes me think they drew Kozilek's Command this turn. Or if just equipping it and bashing made more sense the turn before, even if they've had it the whole game. Now I'm back in. I get it. Four top, one bottom. That's a lot of things to like. Saga. Okay. Deck and untapped land. I'm still looking for it. Wrath of the Skies with two energy in the bank. If I could clear fours... Then we're not under any pressure. Uh oh, five men in the pool. Never mind. Six men in the pool. What's going on over there? Oh, we're going to kick this Myco spawn. I cannot win this game anymore. Oh, man, deck just literally went from can never lose to can never win because I just missed a land drop for four turns. OK, this is going to be really hard to win. I'm not going to say can't ever win. Like a fetch land, if it gets me Sacred Foundry, I can kill one of the micro spawns with the bolt and work my way to a spot where Wrath of the Skies is good again. They did just undo half of their scries, though, by tutoring a land. Ooh, the blade. Okay, if they push too hard on the blade, Solitude is a blowout. Come on, Sacred Foundry. That is a route to Sacred Foundry. I would be at six life. Okay, I'm going to pass here. This can become one of these. Am I dead if I don't do this now? They have one card in hand. An attack for six. Okay, I'm going to pass. The Sagas tick up. I'm not worried about that this turn. That's a problem next turn. If they just, like, poke me for the cheeky six, or if they only equip one thing, then Solitude can buy me time. I guess between Bolt and Solitude... It's hard to really mess this up. Okay, that's equipped there. If their hand has real follow-up, I'm probably just dead. It's going to take every resource I have just to navigate the board, I think. Okay, here come these. No blocks. They'll have to sack three spawns to make this a lethal attack. A okay, plus one counter. Plus one counter. Plus one counter. More spells. More things are happening. They're just using their floating mana for a construct. Okay. okay I'm going to pitch Solitude. And this will be four, five, six, seven damage. Fetch down to one. All right. Well, I have to kill the micro spawns anyway. So I should just go after the bigger creature, which is the spawn. Because if I stabilize at one, Wrath of the Skies leaving a four drop in play, I still don't win that game. I would end up at three if these hit me. That shock bolt one is the same as being at three. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to use my fetch land to get a surveil in and try to hit the fourth land. I'm going to get meticulous archive here. The time for red mana has passed. Come on, just show me a basic land. EI into the graveyard. We could still do it with an untapped land. Untapped land. Oh my goodness. I'm at one. Or I don't even have to fetch because of Yavamaya. Wrath for two, pay four. They end up with three lands and play two cards in hand. It won't take much for them to win this game from here, but that was a huge moment of stabilization. Fingers crossed. Oh my god. All right, well, they probably take Lightning Bolt here. And I have to hope to draw another Wandering Emperor. Teferi's good as well. He draws. Tune the narrative. Could be Teferi. Not a Teferi. All right. Tough game. The Magic the Gathering mana screw is real, but that is part of the game. I kept a two-lander on the strength of a cantrip, and the cantrip did not deliver. I can sign to memory and Blood Moon look good here. Wrath of the Skies was would have been good the whole time. Path to Exile. They are a combo deck. A creature-based combo deck. Supreme Verdict is good if they go super wide. It's a fairy, not actually a good card in this matchup. Invert Polarity. I think counterspells in general are probably pretty bad here. You can mostly play to the board. This is a matchup where I think I'd want to slam Narset early and often. 
Solitude's great. Subtlety is great. Lightning Bolt does kill some stuff in their deck. Less than I'd like. I'm actually just upgrading these to Path to Exiles. I'm not going to get too weird about that. Galvanic yeah, Discharge can kill X4s. And it can Ritual for Wrath of the Skies. This Prismatic Ending going to find any good homes. But I'd rather have Counterspell than Prismatic Ending. I can get one of these back and cut one of these. Answering things in play is part of the matchup, but I'm putting in a bunch of things that do that. I think I'm okay with the current spread of things. Engineered Explosives could be useful. Casting the Fire could be useful, but I think I'm going to stop there. Okay, that's uh, early options on Blood Moon. Just need to find a land to cast it. I'll lead on Scalding Tarn, because that one can consign to memory. Prismatic Vista. They're so ready for me. Forest. Delighted Halfling. Yeah, they're super ready. I'm just going to draw. Subtlety. I'll probably have to use a fetch to surveil. Which is obviously not ideal because I want to cast Blood Moon. Yeah, I'll get Meticulous Archive here. Steam Vents. All right, I will keep that. I don't think slamming Blood Moon is the play. I'm going to play Steam Vents tapped and pass. I have consigned a memory up. I can get basic white or blue here. End step, probably making some dopes. I am actually going to counter this. Am I going to counter this? Let's see. I'm worried about sowing Myco Spawn. If they can kick that, I could counter the, the kickers on it. All right, that's fine. It resolves. I'm not happy about it, but it resolves. Prismatic Vista Fetch Cast Delighted Halfling is really nice for them, though. That was a phenomenal deck building way to just absorb what Blood Moon. They just immediately didn't care about it. Saga, happy to answer that. Yeah, they are doing what I was worried about, but I'm ready to consign this. I definitely consigned the... Okay, so they did the tutor first. I'm going to let them tutor first. I hope it's an Ursa Saga. Drowsy Temple, disappointing. All right, I'm going to fetch basic planes and counter the creature and the, the kill my land thing. Cast with Replicate. Target this. Replicate it once. Counter the body. Yeah, I was hoping to get them on the hook for another Urza Saga when my hand has two ways to answer that cleanly. It didn't fall for it, though. Oh, drawing that basic island is gross. I think Wrath is the best thing I can do here because that clears the Saga and the Halfling. That gets me set up to stick the Blood Moon next turn. I have Subtlety this turn. A waste. They just don't care about Blood Moon. This is actually embarrassing. And if they have another Micro Spawn and Exile my Red Source. Oh my god. That is clearly what's happening. Maybe Eldrazi one time in the history of the Earth just didn't have five Sowing Micro Spawns in their opening hand. Could that be ever the reality I live in? I don't think it's possible. Okay, I'm not going to fight over this Myco Spawn. It's not worth two cards to me. There's the Blade. Okay, I'm going to Blood Moon their ass. They still have four mana and both of their colors. I spent the turn sweeping up the half lane to hope I could at least cut them off colorless, even if I can't cut them off green. And no, sir, not what happened. Knowing how well this deck can absorb a blood moon though is really helpful for sideboarding and planning if i see it in the wild basic mountain cool that's just more of the same all right blood moon i can pitch the subtlety if i have to and if they play the the brood scale thing i might have to another forest from hand okay this is the combo the combo is whenever one or more plus one counters is on this put on this you make a spawn and spawns can sack themselves and whenever a thing dies you Put a plus one counter on this. I could use Path to Exile to solve this. I think that's what I should be doing. Okay, they are going for that. I'm going to Path in response. Because if I wait, they can go off in response at any time. And they basically, I guess they just make an infinitely large creature in response. There's not like actually a cost to that. Maybe I'm supposed to hold it, my horses. But they also just don't have to do anything. Okay. Blue, red. Lauren Revealed is another island. So put Lauren Revealed to my hand, put Sacred Foundry on the bottom, Exile Tune the Narrative. Island Cycle Lauren Revealed. Get a basic, cast Tune the Narrative, and I can discharge onto this Myco Spawn. 
if I need to. They got three cards in their hand over there. I'm running out of juice, but we are tenuously stable. I actually don't think I can Galvanic Discharge the Myco Spawn in combat this turn unless they do something first main that taps them out. Because they're just threatening an infinitely large creature at basically any point. Okay, there's seven men in the pool. This could be a Kozilek's command for five, just making a bunch of dopes and digging. It's for four. They left one floating. Okay. They can have the dopes. And I think I will have to discharge the Myco Spawn in response to them equipping here. But then that leaves a wall of dopes in play whenever. I can get up to six energy, which is one short, because they can equip for one, and then they can make it seven. Oh god, that's so much worse. Well, that is the thing I was worried about the most. And now it's here. Okay, they floated a mana. Where are they putting this? All right, well, we at least played around this as much as we could. Spend two energy on that. They can still make Myco Spawn really big starting next turn. The Fair Plan grinding out here. Fair Plan halted. That one prismatic ending that I didn't cut. There it is. Subtlety's up. I just have to stabilize versus a 3 3. Cut the shit. You can't have that. I am prepared to basically subtlety any play here. Because I just want to be on board. And I will trade subtlety for sowing Myco Spawn immediately if it attacks. We're in top deck mode. Need a ring, need a Narset. I've done my job as the control deck. To make it this far, great. <laughs> Another blade. Okay, now I am not going to block this thing. Because I don't get a trade. Yeah, they can just push it for five. That costs them two mana. The top of their deck is Glaring Flesh Raker. Come on, good card. Any removal spell. That's not it. That is a mountain. I guess I play it out because One Ring and Lauren Revealed and stuff, or I've used my Lauren Revealed. One Ring is in my deck. There's the Raker. It's less scary from zero cards in hand. Moving the blade onto the Halfling. Do I take the damage here? What is the benefit of having Subtlety in play? I think close to nothing. Yeah, I'm just going to block. Okay, Wandering Emperor plays here. Any of the Wraths play. Narset's a creature. Land dead. Okay. That was a really cool game, actually. This deck is super sweet. I'm excited to play it. Like I said, it's in my queue. It's coming up. That's the first time I've seen it in action in Modern, though. Really impressive how it just applied steady pressure all the time. Its combo pieces were relevant even when they weren't comboing. Very cool. On to the next round. The Bosch and Roll channel is proudly partnered with The Resleevables. Good. All right, here we go, gang. In this YouTube series, hosts Cedric Phillips and Patrick Sullivan take us on a set-by-set -set journey through the good, the bad, and the ugly of Magic's history. Each episode is a focused deep dive into the facts about a set's design and release. The magic lore expressed through the cards in that set. Tournament edition gameplay videos featuring products and Pro Tour decks of the era an award show that shouts out the best and weirdest cards of the set, and a final grade for the set's overall success. Whether you want a history lesson or a nostalgia hit, The Resleevables has it at youtube.com slash The Resleevables. I'm on the draw against the Aspiring Spike. I'm going to keep my hand. It's pretty slow. A lot of counters in it. We'll see if this is a matchup where counter spells good, or if it's a matchup where I'm dead. Those are the two modes when you keep a hand with three counter spells. Basic Island. All right, I'm in. That cast two in the narrative. Thundering Falls. Kept the card. Scary. Cycling Lorien. This is starting to look like a Cascade deck of some kind. And it's Spike, so it could be anything. But just the structure of... I don't know. Maybe I'm just making shit up, but I'm getting those vibes. We have successfully gotten to representing Counterspell. And if we can make this train run... Okay, it's it's not a Cascade deck. There is a Null Drifter under this Eugene's lab. I'm going to get the Meticulous Archive here and just die somehow. Okay, just Kozilekking in response, that's fine. Looking at some cards, making some spawns. Not a huge problem. Topped both cards, that might be a huge problem. Narset. 
I am not ready for her. I'm looking for land drops. Yeah, found our set anyway. Rewarded. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Made the correct decision and still got the cool card. I can invert polarity. I can counter spell. We can play Drago for a while. Drago only works if I hit a land here, though. Nice. Had it. Had it. Always had it. Brain surge in the end step. I'm jealous of whatever's happening right now. This looks awesome. Is it Eldrazi control? Is it just a control deck that leverages Ugin's Labyrinth? Or is there proper Eldrazi stuff happening somewhere along the chain? Eldrazi miracles. Cycling Lorien revealed for an island. Okay, big moment. If I draw the fifth land here... Yeah, okay. Now I can cast Solitude in opponent's end step, and then I'm actually doing something. Might be able to flip the, the tempo here. I'm getting buried by Brain Surges, though. Maybe I'm supposed to counter that one. Now I have so much mana I could counter twice in a turn. And maybe countering that would make him think he could cast a spell on his turn. Ten mana over there. Could get Ulamogged at any point. I'm going to fetch in the end step. Do I want Sacred Foundry or Hallowed Fountain? How much red do I think I need this game? It's more about blue than red. Yeah, I, I do need Hallowed Fountain. Do I need Hallowed Fountain or can I just get basic and save some pain? I think I can afford basic. Yeah, all right. I'm going to cast Solitude. I would not normally do this if I had land drops to hit, but I don't want to go to discard, and I do want to break the, the Drago mold here. Okay, another Brain Surge. Still surging in the end step. And I'm untapping with a threatened play. Oh, Teferi definitely breaks the mold here. Here we go. Crack it open. Big Tef. Whatever you got, let's see it. Now or never. Okay, we're in. Attack with Solitude. The gain. I could pick up Solitude, but if I miss a land drop, I go to discard. I'm going to plus Teferi. Lots of mana. Through the Breach. Oh, I don't like that. As he sculpted a turn, we could through the breach twice. Not quite. What is the follow-up? Evoking Null Drifter. That's allowed. Okay, we fended that off. The Teferi was huge because uh, opponent manipulating the game to a spot where end step through the breach is something I have to fight over, untap lay another through the breach. Not a play pattern I want to engage with. I do want to hit a land drop here. I think I'd rather just pick up Solitude, though. It's time to do that. Didn't hit the land. I can just go to discard and dump a Narset. Like, this game's not going to be about Narset. Sorry, girl. Clean up the Narset. Lorian revealed. Inverting the polarity of this would be pretty fucked. I will try that. Heads. Hey, that's mine now. Yoink. Okay, there's a land drop. Talisman resolves. Cycling Lorian. Hit Steam Vents. Played Steam Vents. Okay, I am going to lose some cards here. Oh, I like that card. Plus to fairy, play the one ring, and yeah, I probably just discard Wrath of the Skies. Okay, Ulamog and Emrakul still both jack me up here pretty good. Yeah, we just have three breaches. I'll draw here. Okay, this is gonna work. Ulamog, Ward sack two permanents. Okay, beginning of combat. Solitude, Exiling, Wrath of the Skies. I'm going to make sure that I stack my triggers in a way that I can stack Solitude to the, the ward. Ooh, Solitude and I, Planes? Solitude and Planes? Yeah. Okay. Got through that. Opponent's a 24, though. But you know who turns the clock quickly? Monastery Mentor. We both have huge amounts of life. Plus to Fairy, Blooded Strand, Monastery Mentor. Let's go. Flip the clock. That's three through the breaches down. Getting close to just casting the, the units out of the deck, though. Ulamog exiles the top half of their library. This is counterable, right? Yes, okay. Counter Ulamog. And I'm going to fetch before my library is gone, just to make sure I have... The mana I want to lightning bolt in the end step. End step bolt you. Just pushing damage now. We got a 16 from the ring. 16 cards left in my deck. What got exiled? We lost. Discharge, prismatic ending, ring, both emperors, subtlety, counter spell. Okay, I think I'm out of counter spells then. I'm not out of narsets. Okay, load me up one ring. 
Fresh Teferi under here. 12 cards in my deck. I'm going to bounce this ring. It's very close to decking me. All right, I found the other subtlety. That's good. And Fresh Teferi, Prowess Triggers. Play this one. If I bounce the spawn, I don't draw a card, but I do get a bunch of extra damage through. I can also just bounce Talisman. I mean, with 11 cards in my deck, that's not really what any of this is about. Yeah, just going to bounce the spawn. Ooh, did not, did not bounce it. Wants to deck me. Cool. All right. Get that through. And I have to discard a bunch of cards. One ring. EI. Okay. A lot of men in the pool. We've got another Ulamog coming. Oh, yeah. All right, exile. Five cards. Subtlety. Put that away, please. It's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, I have lethal here. If there's no more tricks, and I won't run out of cards in my deck. Oh, lightning bolt makes it super easy. Bolcha, plus to fairy. I guess I just attack. What are the tricks? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This is enough, and I can buff the squad again if there's another trick. Cool. All right, sweet. But through the breach is scary. Blood Moon seems solid here. Consigned to memory, of course. This is more of a combo deck than it is an Eldrazi deck. I got to play it like that. Maybe a Wrath of the Skies is the cut here. Or a Galvanic Discharge. Yeah, that's probably worse than Wrath. My whites are better pitches than reds. Lightning Bolt did help close the game. Path to Exile is just another answer to an Ulamog. If I don't have to counter every through the breach, that's nice. Ward sack two permanents is pretty messed up though, and Wandering Emperor is terrible versus Willamog because by the time it's tapped, you're already annihilating a thousand. Supreme Verdict does clear Willamog if we get into the hardcast part of the game, where I don't have to counter or use Ward to clear it. That is an option. Surgical Extraction, clearing all the through the breaches after I deal with the first one. I normally don't like that as a play pattern, but that is the scariest part of their deck. Maybe Blood Moon's not even good. We saw a million Orion Reveals in this deck. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna not trick myself into playing Blood Moon this time. And yeah, if I can clear the Ulamogs or the Breaches out of the deck, this is controversial. The, the Surgical, I just think it is better than the Creature Removal spells. But I'm not bringing in both. It's not like I'm treating it like Dredge, but just having one around that I can dig for in a spot where... The mid game is already upon us. Let's go. Let's try it. I didn't see one ring in the deck. I probably should have planned that they probably have it, though. Whoops. Okay. I'm going to mulligan this no lander. Okay. The counter spell deck is back. I'm going to bottom prismatic ending and try it. Thundering Falls. Calibrated Blast. Okay. That is another win con. Archive. I'll keep the tune. This does have flashback. Counter spells up. Dumped in Ulamog. That means Surgical Extraction now has just a target I don't even have to set up for. I'm going to tune first and then fetch for Thundering Falls. Found a ring. Falls. Yeah, I'll keep another tune. Keep it tuning. Never stop tuning. It's a blue card for subtlety, if nothing else. Basic Island. Time to start surging our brains. Calibrated Blast. Oh no. This is just at random. Okay, I'll take my chances. Oh my god. Just randomly took 10. <laughs> okay. You got me. You got me. That sucked. Okay, Calibrated Blast costs 5 and is an instant. Yeah, I'm going to cast Tune the Narrative. If you just blast me for another 10 at random here, you deserve it. Narset's in my hand. Oh no. Missing this land drop is rough. Take my chances. I take three. Not countering that shit. Oh, these aren't in the hand. They go to the bottom. I'll counter this. Oh no, am I getting mystically disputed? All right, yeah, probably dead. What do we got? And then we're cool. All right, I don't have the solitude. Cool. Okay, calibrated blast in the mix now and confirming mystical dispute now available. Calibrated Blast and Through the Breach can both win through a Blood Moon as well. Just really not interested in that. Prismatic Ending seems really useless. I am not set up well for this. 
And although all the bones are there for a one ring deck, with the Calibrated Blast, the Eldrazi, the Brain Surges, do you even have room for that after all that? Blood Moon could help me with Encounter Wars. Maybe that's better than Prismatic Ending. Though the Calibrated Blast now, maybe Surgical is better than I thought. And I could shave a Narset to make room for that. Okay, game's getting weird. I'm going in. I'll keep. I'd rather have too many lands than not enough. Gemstone Cavern, we're dead. It's over. Thundering Falls. Don't need Flooded Strand this game. Drazi Temple. I'm going to play Scalding Tarn because my plan is to get Meticulous Archive and Flooded Strand is better at getting my basics. All right, five mana for Aldrazi here. Only four for Through the Breach. Whatever that's worth. Archive. Two in the narrative. I don't actually want that. There, Kozilex commanding. And left up the Gemstone Cavern. Could have gone deeper here. I'm going to read that as Mystical Dispute. Uh, uh Well, I guess I'm casting this Blood Moon. I still lose to Through the Breach next turn. But this at least turns off counters. All right, hard cast mystical dispute. That was pretty good. Let's see if I'm dead. Rain surge. Okay, looks like we dodged the worst possible outcomes here. And that was a pretty good exchange of resources. Okay, hard cast subtlety is live. If they cast just something that doesn't kill me right away, Supreme Verdict's live. I could just flash in a subtlety and start attacking. I don't think I'm quite ready to commit to that yet. Giving my opponent a really good target for Kozlex command would be pretty bad. Brain Surge into Fetch Land in the end step, the full value. I'll fetch in the end step. I'm going to get a basic island. I still have other Blood Moons I could draw. There's Narset. She's pretty slow for what I want to be doing right now. Oh, I should have shocked that in. Shit. I just let myself lose to Mystical Dispute, and the two life is not going to matter. Dang. Uh, they have. This is random. Lorian Reveal is good for five. The Calibrated Blast is a steady endgame, though. I'm going to cast Subtlety in the end step now. Just try to flip it around. Apply some pressure. Make my opponent do anything. Kozilek's Command. Made Dinguses and Digging. Now, this does represent 13 mana. That's so much. Counterspell. I think I'm just going to pass here. I might die this turn. But Subtlety plus Counterspell. Invert Polarity plus Counterspell. Invert, Counterspell... Pitch cast subtlety are all live. I'm going to cast another subtlety in the end step. I'm just trying to tempo deck at this point. The Supreme Verdict is basically blank. I can flip a coin to try to beat Emrakul. Just gain control of it or do nothing on my spell. That's fun. Dynamic gaming. It looks like we have a through the breach in the end step. Oh, it's a calibrated blast. All right. You don't know your top card, do you? Nope. Oh, God. The 10 ball. The 10 ball. These are the risks we take. Do they have Lightning Bolt in their deck? Because I do, and my opponent's at 9. The Tempo Subtlety plan actually pretty good here. I'm not going to fetch. I'm not sure if 1 is materially different than 2 here. Oh, if I can invert this thing's polarity, that's really good. I'm going to use Counterspell first, because if I can invert the polarity after they tap out, because they do have 5 to send it again. Oh, right, they have way more than that shit. I forgot about the Mystical Dispute. Yeah, now I probably lose. I should have inverted the first one. Yeah, all right. Well, presumably, there's no one-drops in this deck. All right, yeah, GG. I think if I play the Subtlety a turn earlier, maybe the clock's better. Uh, I did forget the Spawn Snake Man on the last turn, but I don't think I could have played around it. And getting 10 balled randomly off of two out of three Calibrated Blasts that were cast sucks. GG though, rip, very cool deck. On to the next round. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. If you're having fun, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can order it all in one package from cardtrader.com. Use code Bosch and Roll for 5% off your first order. I'm on the play in round four versus a gigant the deck. I'm going to keep. I do need a white source. But once I find one, I'm in good shape. Famous last words. You know I don't mulligan hands with a land and a cantrip in them. The most popular Gigantha deck is Energy, whether Boros or Mardu represents about 25% of the format between them. Bloodstained Mire, Mardu Energy, more likely. Blood Crypt. Let's see if this is Thoughtseize, Ragavan, or 
Okay, I'm going to tune in response. I don't want them to take tune, is the problem. I have a bunch of white cards, and I need to dig for the lands to find them. Well, if Lorien Revealed was in my hand at the time Thoughtseize was cast, I would have done that instead. Awkwardly, I did find a land, but they can take it. Let's see if they want to roll the dice on taking Lorien Revealed, or take the, the actual good cards to cast. Because if they take Lorien Revealed and I just draw a fetch land, it's like the Thoughtseize didn't do anything. Okay, they did just take the good card. Okay, I'm going to get Meticulous Archive and play it right now. And thought, Moto Thoughtseize bug. I immediately redrew the card that they Thoughtseized and found Double White to cast it. Good stuff. The hub. Hubba hubba. Raptor. Got three in the tank. Hit Flage. Okay, Flage is in the graveyard now. Okay, I could hide my other white source. I think I am going to play Steam Vents tapped and then end the Raptor. This doesn't give them any, any information that they didn't have already off the Thoughtseize. They don't know that I have another Wrath. They don't know that I have the second white to cast my spells. And the board is clear. Bombardment, okay. I get swept up in Wrath anyway. And now I have access to Subtlety or Wandering Emperor. They're missing land drops. Great spot for a control deck to be in. I'm going to play the Emperor. It might just die to some removal spell. It's it survives Orcish Bowmaster. They would have to Bowmaster plus sack the, the creature. Like Bowmaster is probably the best card they could have here. 2-2 two, two Samurai. Okay, now the question is, is this worth two cards? And the, I think the answer is no. Like, they can ping and then hit it with Goblin Bombardment, and then it's gone. But now I have a 2-2 two, two versus a 1-1. One, one. And I've played enough Magic to know which one of those is bigger. I am going to Iteration. I'd like to hit more action. Yikes. That's super awkward. Missed on the land. Don't have the red source to play the other EI digging for the land. I guess I want Wandering Emperor in my hand. EI to the bottom and just delete this Teferi from existence. Yeah, that hurts. And pass. Amped Raptor. This is at least two creatures now for bombarding purposes. Flage that cannot be cast, just exiled. See and never. Loser. Looks like they're thinking in combat. It would be crazy aggressive to trade Bowmaster and Amteraptor for Samurai Token right now. I hope they do, but I don't think it's a good play. The One Ring. Now I'm incentivized to remove Orcish Bowmaster from play. I also have the option to attack with the Samurai plus Wandering Emperor onto it, then have a 3 3 first strike. Okay, they are taking the obvious block. I will make this thing big. And because they both have first strike, there's not a deal first strike damage, then fling this line here. They could just you know, boop the Wandering Emperor or me for one. They could let combat damage resolve and then fling Orcish Bowmaster at the token. Oh wow, they are doing that sick. My master plan to clear the Bowmaster has worked. Do I want to pitch Solitude here? I think no. I'm getting a lot of value off this exchange already. Why well, give it back by 2 for one myself just to keep a 3-3 in play? A Johnny? That is a powerful card. If they fling the Cat Warrior, I think I do have to Solitude the Ajani here. Because this doesn't kill Planeswalkers. Okay. I don't want this Planeswalker going to town. It dealt another damage to Wandering Emperor. And now I stick a 1 ring on a relatively empty board. So is One Ring even better than Solitude plus Counterspell? They've been locked for so long here. The Orcish Bowmaster is a giant pain in the butt. I just pitched my second Wrath of Disguise, though, and I only played two in the main. So that's over. I think I'm just going to pass with Subtlety and Counterspell up and try to leverage my Planeswalker for a turn or two. Slam plan number three into play. If they have Thoughtseize plus two drop, that's actually annoying. Ocelot Pride. Okay, uh, they can sack that to kill Wandering Emperor, but that's fine. Another Ocelot Pride. I'm going to Subtlety this one. I just want big bodies on the board. And getting the Subtlety in now makes it so I don't really care if I lose the Emperor or a Samurai. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. I'd be a little surprised if they keep this on top. It doesn't look very good here, and I know they need land number four for Flage. Well, they did keep it on top. All right. They got a plan. 
they can first strike plus fling here, but then they trade Ocelot Pride for Samurai Token. I'm okay with that. Okay, they take a million. I'm going to cast my One Ring. They're drawing Ocelot Pride this turn. If they have land for for Flage, I don't know where the hell it came from. Okay, that's a good one to have in the tank. It's going to be hard for them to gain life this turn, though. They're dealing damage to Samurai. They can make a cat finish off Subtlety. Yeah, maybe I was just a dope here and did the, the cardinal sin of control gaming, which is tap out when you're ahead. Now, counter spells just don't really matter. Teferi doesn't help at all. Thundering Falls. Do I want this land? I don't think so. And I don't have attacks. Yikes, I might have fucked up. Now they can kill this. Kill. Yeah, I am in a lot of trouble here. They don't need to cast spells anymore. This Goblin Bombardment is just dominating the game. Unsurprisingly. I guess Teferi can bounce Goblin Bombardment. That at least gives me something I can do. I'm going to leave up red in case I draw a Discharge. That didn't happen. Maybe I'm supposed to bounce an Ocelot Pride and not the Bombardment. Even if they sack it, I guess I still lose in combat. No, that doesn't solve any problems. Yikes, we're behind. Probably going to lose. Shouldn't have tapped out. They went for plus one counters. Sending everything at Teferi. Uh, that's fine. I will take the trade with the cat I can kill, though. And being out of Wraths, I uh, don't know how I can come back here. I guess I have to connect with Narset is the answer. They did not replay the Bombardment. They might not have to. Am I dead if I tap this ring? I'm at nine. I go to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Damage gets through, or three, four, five, six, seven. Damage gets through if they plus. I'm at one. And I do have a counter spell. If they just cat, I take five. I'm at three, and then they win easily in combat. But the one ring could find prismatic ending. That answers the Ajani. Okay, got a ring. Please don't have Bowmaster. I really can't afford to counter spell that this turn. But they had a reason that they didn't play the Goblin Bombardment. So there is a two or three mana spell in their hand that was worth the squeeze there. Okay, they decided not to go for it. And I did hit the Prismatic Ending. They still have six damage on board. Plus the Goblin Bombardment. I'm quite certain I can't win this game if they have Bowmaster. I might not be able to win this game even if they don't have Bowmaster. But I definitely can't win it if they do. Okay, Basic Planes, Prismatic Ending. That's a twofer on that one. And I'm going to pass. I can invert polarity on a Bowmaster, but then I die to Goblin Bombardment. Interesting. Why did they wait? That was so fresh. The, the opportunity was there. Okay, this is an important flip to win. I'm definitely dead if I lose the flip. I'm probably still dead if I win the flip. Lost the flip. All right, that's countered. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Yeah, I'm dead. Ah, gross. Yeah, I, I messed up. I shouldn't have tapped out that turn. Just ride my... Why push any advantage when it could fall apart like that? The Supreme Verdict, Engineered Explosives, Wrath of the Sky is all coming in. Spell Snare gets a Johnny and Bowmaster. Path can clear specifically annoying things like a Johnny and Bowmaster. I don't think I want Path in, though. I don't think Teferi is very good here. I like all the removal... Counter spell pretty mid, and we saw why. It's just you can't leave up mana forever because they have flash things, they have permanence that if they resolve, you're just in trouble, and then counter spells don't matter anymore. I still want some, but not that many. I actually do like Narset a lot here. Cast in the fire can kill two Ocelot Prides or a Bowmaster and a Pride. I think I want that. I'm gonna shave another counter here. I do like Narset. I'm going to try her. I'm going to leave her in full numbers here. Do I shave a ring? That can't possibly be right. But I'm also more excited to play all the other cards in the deck than I am to play the ring. I'm doing it. Okay, I'll keep this. It needs some lands, but I like all the spells. They got a Marsh Flats and a Thought Seize. I'll draw a card in response. I don't think I'm supposed to draw a card in response here. I think I messed up. Well, too late now. I'm going to draw a card in response. I think I'm supposed to let Thought Seize resolve. If they take through the narrative, I just fetch Meticulous Archive. And if they don't, I tune afterwards and they have less information. Took the counter spell. Okay. 
my options here are set up with a fetch land or a surveil or just invest explosives on two because all their best plays cost two. And I think I'd rather set up the fetch land. Dash Ragavan. Okay. There's that guy. It's going to hit me. I'm not going to fetch first. Exile Thundering Falls. Literally what I was going to fetch for. Played me like a fiddle. Guide of Souls. Okay. I'll get Meticulous Archive now. Cast into the fire. Is that good? Kills Ragavan, but not Guide of Souls. I'm going to put that in the graveyard. Explosives for one kills Guide of Souls and Ragavan. Now we're on curve here. Baracus Theater. Amped Raptor. I'm going to let them amp here. Goblin Bombardment. Annoying. Well, I'll explode in response so they can't fling the guide at me. They got three, four cards in their hand plus Ragavan. Uh, I'm going to slam Narset and hope she doesn't die immediately. This is a spot where this card could take over the game. Unfortunately, a Flage, a Bombardment, a Static Prison, a Bowmaster, a, a Johnny, they all just do enough here. I guess the Johnny's one short. Unless they sack an extra creature. But we know Ragavan's over there. Yep. So the Ragavan is enough to clear the Narset. This deck is so good. This deck was keeping up with Nadu. And it just stayed legal in its entirety. Do you know they've nerfed three cards out of this? In the arena version of this format. And it is just really cool the way all these pieces interact. The Goblin Bombardment is just so fucked up. Honestly, I think it rules that Goblin Bombardment is a competitive magic card in 2024. One of my favorites. Exile of Flooded Strand. I didn't want to draw that. Played perfectly. Okay. Okay. In terms of cards I could draw, this was a good one. Unfortunately, the Ajani is a Planeswalker and the Ragavan is still over there. They could just dash rag, boot me with Ajani, add to the board every single turn. Gross. Gonna have to beat a Ragavan and a Planeswalker now. Back in again. Exiled Galvanic Discharge. That's one of the best cards I could have drawn. Sad that it's gone. Blage. Uh, I'm not quite dead, but it's very close. I'm at one. Because I have to fetch. I don't know what could possibly get me out of this. Even the one ring doesn't save me here. It's certainly not Narset. All right, GG. Completely obliterated by that. Neither game felt even close at all. I could have held up counters that one turn in game one, but the fact that one of the top decks in the format is one that if a permanent resolves you're dead makes being a counter spell deck pretty spooky like you just have to be perfect okay on to the final round i'm on the play in the final round if this isn't a hand you keep then this deck is indefensible let's go restless anchorage first appearance of this one opponents on six cards meticulous archive cool just curving out tap land tap land one drop just how he drew it up. Galvanic Discharge. I will keep this. A Scalding Tarn could be Frog Tide, could just be a red fetch land out of any creature deck. Thundering Falls. I think I'm going to tune the narrative now. I'm not sure what I need to be worried about on turn two out of a Thundering Falls. Urza Saga. Okay, so this is probably Team or Breach. A deck that is very cool and I like a lot. Confirmed. No other cards, no other card decks playing that card. The Wandering Emperor. Okay, I'm going to have access to red here and hope I don't die. They've produced a game state where just the card Urza Saga is terrifying all on its own with no help from anything. Yeah, I'll keep that for later. And I think I'm actually going to hold up Wandering Emperor rather than jam one ring right now. Because if they are just... If they do just settle into Saga Gaming, I want to be able to absorb that and turn it around on them. Okay, just making constructs here. No big deal. Ox Amber, a little scary. No Legends in play yet, but this is an Emery deck. It's a Tameo deck. I don't think the builds currently play Ragavan, but they might. There's the Emery. Emery hit Mishra's Bobble on Holy Heat Spell Snare. Bobble's the only artifact in there. I'm going to play the Emperor. They can just sack the Construct to mill three. And then I also don't gain life. Okay. They either didn't see it or didn't want to do that. I'll take that. Either way, the Construct's out of play, which is the important thing to me. Okay, cool. 
I'm going to discharge Emery. That is the scary permanent play right now. I'm going to make a 2-2 because this Wandering Emperor is going to die anyway. And I think I'd rather hold up Counterspell this turn, and then I can EI or One Ring next turn. I'm not interacting with a Mistress Bauble, that's fine. Unholy Heat. Oh no. Shifting Woodland, that can become Emery. A little scary. Okay, that was kind of a waste of a turn. I'm going to play Iteration. I have a lot of answers to a Construct token in my deck. There's one right there. Blooded Strand to my hand, Hallowed Fountain to the bottom, Exile Prismatic Ending, Play, Scalding Tarn, End the Construct. Okay, they remembered this time. They milled over a One Ring, Unholy Heat, Mountain. And Shifting Woodland becomes a copy of Target Permanent until end of turn. Okay. If they get to five mana, they can start copying One Ring and drawing one card in each end step. And they are there. That is a slow but steady source of interaction and advantage. Touching in the end step, I think I would like another red available to me. Expressive iteration. I think one ring with counterspell backup is probably just the safest and smartest thing to do. Grab a basic out of the pile first. Draw on a card. Found Wrath of Disguise. That's good for the future, maybe. But if they are on the slow, copy one ring, draw a card, this turns back into a land loop. Okay, they didn't do that. And the burden counter, I believe, stays on Shifting Woodland. So they actually are drawing one, then two, then three, etc. cards without ever taking damage. Okay, this dies to Wrath of the Skies, which means I'm going to leave it alone. If they can draw two more cards right now, that plays ahead of that. They're copying the ring, which will draw one card. Okay, so they are in their ring arc, and the burden counter does stay on. I'll draw two cards. Gotta win somehow. Mountain, gonna wrath for two. I don't have triple white. I probably could have fetched better at some point to make that the case. Wrath for two, and I'm gonna pass. I can counterspell twice, but their ring doesn't hurt them, and mine does. Versus Saga, the turn after I Wrath of Disguise. Life is Pain. Okay, one ring. Drawn cards. I'm going to counter Emery. I just don't want that card in play ever. And I have spells to cast. Invert Polarity, that's cool. Teferi, what's up? I like Teferi a lot. That can send this Urza Saga back where it came from. I have to discard anyway, so I'll just bolt their dome. And now the race is on. The passive graveyard hate of Narset actually would have been insane this game if I could use Narset to exile the the ring from their graveyard, their shifting woodland engine collapses. Okay, they kept Tamio here, which will flip immediately because they have the one ring. Or no, they need another mana. They're, oh, they have this one. But they don't have double green. But now they do. <laughs> uh, one, two, three. No, that's, they're still short. Or no, they can tap and sack. They could make, make this happen if they want. Okay, they are doing it. They are flipping the Tamiyo. Okay, yep, this works. Unfortunate. And Tamiyo can't do anything except plus here. There's not even like a world where they don't do it. And step Emperor. I will still add to the board the power and toughness that I can. Samurai with Vidge. I go to nine off my ring trigger. Mentor, huh? That's a win condition. Kind of. I'm going to tap my ring. Let's go. I win or I don't all this turn. Whatever happens, happens. Plus to fairy. If I play planes and then monastery mentor, I can counter spell, counter spell, not quite also invert polarity. So two counter spells. Am I worried about Tamio buying a spell back? I don't think I can afford to worry about that. And attack my opponent's life points directly. And I'll cast mentor. And I'm at five in my next turn. I'll make a samurai. Clean up, discard, steam vents, and I think it's one of the rings. Because expressive iteration could be velocity to get the prowess through and win the game. Unholy heat. No. Oh, I should have inverted polarity. If that could kill Tamio. Oh, I blew it. Yeah. Shit. I can do it if it comes back. 
Yeah, I should have started on Invert Polarity, and then maybe we don't even have to do this. Yeah, in my head, I had just already committed to... I have I can counter spell twice, but I can't Invert Polarity, but obviously I could just Invert Polarity. That was just bad. But I can't tap out now, because if they play Breach, I lose. I'm leaving up White White in case I still need to Wrath of the Skies this turn. I don't know if that would help, but in case it would, I can still do it. There's no red mana showing right now. I can stick a ring, though. That is, of course, very good and buys them a turn. Okay. I will kill Tamio this turn and go to four from my, or, or five from my ring. I found an R set, not a drill. A one ring load me up. Plus to fairy. Attack Tamio. I have to play a ring or clear the ring somehow. Like playing a ring obviously gives me protection as well. To fairy, bouncing a ring is not without merit. I'm gonna put a plus one counter on my samurai. Okay, here's a ring. Keep the new one so I don't die. Try to play around death where I can. Land for turn. I don't think I can afford to play Narset, and I also don't think it matters. Well, being warned about something. All right, that's gone. I can invert polarity and Wrath of the Skies if I need to do, do those two things. Clean up, discard, Scalding Tarn, and one of the Narsets. Sorry, Narset. I love you. Okay, opponents at five. They're not on board, but they do have a ring active. Urza Saga is about to pop. I think this deck does play Thassa's Oracle for what it's worth. Tutor to Bobble. Underworld Breach. Oh, I'd like to invert the polarity of that, or I could just kill it. It kills all my stuff too, but I could let Breach resolve. Like, that is a permanent that dies to Wrath of the Skies, but they could just copy. They could do that anyway. When and what and how is the correct way to interact with this? They have one, two, three, four. They could just turn this into an Underworld Breach and still go off with two mana left. I'm going to let Breach resolve. If I can get them to commit some mana or some resources and then have a good Wrath of the Skies well, with Counterspell still up. Okay, so Mox Amber, they committed that one. They don't have a Legend to turn it on yet, so Emery's probably their next play. There's Emery. I think I act now. This is pretty awkward because it takes all the pressure off the board for me as well. Okay, X equals three. I have three energy that I can start with. They can unfortunately float a bunch of mana here. I think I want to leave Emery in play. No, I want to make them recast it. All right. X equals three. And then there's a mill. This game is probably going to come down to an invert polarity on Thassa's Oracle, where if it's countered, they can just replay it from their graveyard. And if I steal it, they have nothing. I guess they could unholy heat it and then just play it from the graveyard. Yeah, I probably can't win this game. They got nine cards left over there. They're copying Breach. Yep. Mox Amber. That was from hand. Been sitting on that one. Shifting Woodland is so cool. Any deck that's using that card makes me very happy. Okay, Emery. I could Solitude this in response to the trigger, and then maybe they run out of juice. Is there more than one Emery? Oh, there's so many. Yeah, I don't think that's going to matter. And they milled another Emery. That's not what the game's about. I'm going to have to win a flip on Inverse Polarity. While they also happen to be out of resources. They're Unholy Heating to Fairy. Sad. That turns on counter spells. Counter spells are busted. What well, counter spells are in there? Graveyard. There's Spell Snare. Nothing I'm casting this turn costs two. All right. Bye to Fairy. You served me well. Okay. Mox Amber. Now, if Solitude is ever going to matter, this is when it matters. I'm going to pitch Narset. Because this actually does deny them a blue mana along the loop. This might not matter, but I'm literally just trying to get the game to a spot where they have the fewest resources possible when I go to fight over their Oracle. Yeah, I guess I can draw with the One Ring here. Narset, you're not going to help, sorry. I could still tune the narrative. If this hits Subtlety, that's reasonable. Okay. It's Invert Polarity or Bust from here. They're down to one card in their deck, and they have Mox Ambers to play with. Yeah, they'll... They can, unless they tap out of red to play their oracle, I'm not going to be able to beat this. They just have X blue mana available, where X is the number of cards in their graveyard divided by three. 
they would have to mess this up or not see the line. Emery's, the Emery loop is fully here. Deck is empty. One ring in the graveyard. Amber. If they eat too many cards making mana and don't have three cards to escape heat and then also escape Oracle. All right, I'll try to steal this thing. I don't think they messed up. I don't think I could possibly win this, no matter how this goes. Spell Snare, your own Thoughts of Girl. That's the same as Unholy Hating It, but okay. Oh, they exile all their heats. All right, so, yep, that works too. And then they just play the Oracle. Okay, yep, GG. Yeah, Team of Breach, really tough for our slow control decks. You really gotta get this deck dead or lock it out somehow, or it will find ways to grind through. Consigned, very good against Thassa's Oracle. Wrath of the Skies, good versus their setup. Cast in the Fire, their deck's full of artifacts. Surgical Extraction plays. Blood Moon is probably really annoying for them. I don't know where I'm going to find all these slots in the sideboard. I think I'm going to cut the Discharges. Lightning Bolt can go face. The passive Graveyard Hate of Narset would have actually been huge there if I had drawn one in the top half of my deck. I'm not going to cut that. Wandering Emperor is pretty bad here. Teferi is fine, I guess. Non-creature permanent removal is really good. I'm going to leave in the endings. Lightning Bolt's really only for value Emery, I guess. I'm going to back off of that a little. Do I need subtlety anymore? It's good versus Thassa's Oracle. But I have consigns and surgicals in for that now. I have to win the game somehow, and this is a 3-3. We've got a subtlety and a counterspell. I could see Engineer Explosives come in, but I'm already running out of space. Okay, just a bunch of anti-combo stuff in. Pure win conditions, the classic experience. I'm going to play a land that gets Meticulous Archive. They mult a 5, that helps. Mishra's Bowel, Meticulous Archive, Solitude. I don't think I want another Solitude right now. They're bobbling me now in my upkeep. They knew I drew Invert Polarity. They get to think about that for the rest of the game. That's cool. This is a game where I could see myself casting Lorien Revealed. I'm just going to hold on to that and play a tap land for my hand. Next turn, my plan is Expressive Iteration. Unless I draw something better. Woodland Hedge Maze. They crack their bobble, so you don't expect Emery this turn unless they have another zero. Rumbling. There's Emery and Mox Amber. That's a combo. They took Emery with that. I think Needle Fun. What are you going to name with that? Teferi, probably? Yeah, okay. Teferi is a good name. Monastery Mentor, huh? I could just shove this into play and bet. But they get to play Emery this turn if I don't leave up Counter Magic. Yeah, I'm actually just going to pass. Knowing that they have Emery and they just reduced its cost, there's a Mox Amber in the graveyard. If they go, like, land, breach, something, I'm in trouble. I would rather have a Tamiyo than an Emery. I'll counter this thing. I lost the flip. It's countered. They still get Emery here. Amber and Bobble into the graveyard. Yeah, I can EI. So we'll see if I find a cleaner answer. Ugh, this is messy. I'm going to put Consign in my hand. Narset on the bottom. Exile Blood Moon. Can't play it, unfortunately. How worried I, am I about Emery with Consign available? I'm going to play Anchorage, and I think I'm just going to pass here. Targeting Mox Amber. I'll consign this ring, just how we drew it up. They got one card left over there. And I can hard cast Solitude on Emery here. Fetch basic planes to do that. Okay, they got one card. They can start with one more mana. They can start doing the copy ring every turn thing. But they fetched a non-green source, so that's not the plan. They could just slam a ring from hand. That would be annoying. Cool. I love modern. I love these play patterns. Yep, rings in there. Counter spell. Thundering falls. Narset. <laughs> is it your time? Uh, this card is so clunky. I am going to bin it, unfortunately. Play mentor. I have counter spell up. Hopefully that'll help me survive this turn, and then we get some velocity with the Lorian. Emery sucks, but okay. Saga. Right, I'm going to counter this ring because I need to push damage. They have me in the soft lock of Emery plus some rings. Might not be able to do much damage ever again. Can I clear the Emery? Not with that. 
Okay, Lorien revealed. I'm going to fetch a basic island first. And then Lorien with both colors up. Come on, spells. Spells that kill Emery. That doesn't kill Emery. Might find a... Oh no, I boarded out all my red removal. Nothing I could find there. This is not quite enough pressure that they need to jump with Emery. Maybe they'll get scared. Nope. They're at nine. Fearless. Okay. Could definitely die this turn. Activated their ring. They are dead on board. They have to combo off or stabilize here. Well, they have the ring loop, so no, they're not dead on board. They're fine. They're 100% fine and worried about nothing, actually. That resolves. If this finds a breach or if there's a breach in their hand, they've won. They have another three looks at breach here because they can pay for including the woodland. It doesn't tap to activate. Okay, they just have it. I'm just going to pause like I have anything. They've seen consigned to memory. I don't think there's anything I can actually do here other than hope that they don't go for it. But why would you cast breach if you're not going to go for it? Okay, yeah, they got it. I'm good. Okay, top run. We did, like I said, take some of the, the best cards in this deck like Flage and just make them a four drop that doesn't impact the board instead. Round one, I got to pop off with Narset and that felt really awesome. I get the appeal and then every other round I wanted to board it out or I had no time to deploy it. Some of that might be matchup spread. Some of it might just be Modern's really fast and the cards are all really good. And in the era of every card generating massive advantage on arrival, Maybe cards like this one just don't hold up and you can't play them anymore. That's sad if true, but it's probably true. I wonder if, though, instead of just putting a bunch of Narsets into this shell, what if we had like four subtlety, three force of negation? So we're more comfortable to having out four Narset. That's kind of how the Psychic Frog decks are built right now, where you want to be able to slam your frog the turn you can because it needs to be in play for your deck to really do its thing and it's built with a ton of free permission and it's worth two cards to protect it because realistically like getting complete control of the game resolving to fairy casting narset with six or seven mana available to counter spell to protect it and then you start gaining advantage is so much worse than jam it on four it's a three four pitch casts something to protect it one time and then you're just cooking from there I'm still not sure if it's right or you should be doing this, but if you are going to do it, that seems like a better way. Three also seems like a huge amount of this card. Even having two, like give me one Flage. There were games like that last one where my opponent had just resolved an Emery and it's like, you're, I'm looking at Narset with my Thundering Falls and cannot keep this card where Flage kills Emery and provides a threat. I don't want to keep comparing it to Flage because we know specifically it's not as good as Flage in the format. And that's not fair to the card that we we're just playing with. But I mean, at the same time, it's just true. I think I would not have Wandering Emperor. And I'd have at least th three subtlety, at least two force of negation in this pile. If I'm going to build around sticking a four drop and going to town. And because we're also playing four one rings, that gives us seven hits of stick a four drop, go to town. And if we have something like five to eight ways to protect our four drop that we want to stick every single game, that suddenly becomes a coherent game plan rather than trying to do some just guy energy stuff. But also we have this clunky creature in the deck. I do really like these play patterns, but modern is really powerful. If you're going to divert from the solved stock list, you need a good reason or you need to build the deck to really leverage your fun reason and i think this build is just a little short of justifying this play a few more ways to protect her and and i'm in this was fun though going off monastery mentor always makes me really happy i like counterspell gaming expressive iteration this is the only format you're really able to cast this card anymore fun to have it around i still hate the one ring i don't like the play patterns it provides in the modern format it is extremely boring and homogenizing, and I think all games would be better if this was not a card that be, that could be cast. Wrath of the Skies remains an incredible card to cast. I love this one. And I'm going to leave this here. This was a lot of fun. I think it needs a little work for what it is. If you're trying to win your local RCQ, just play a stock list with flages. 
if you're trying to make Narset work, tune it up the way I suggested, and maybe that'll be just a little better for you. Alex, thank you for sharing this. Everybody, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Patreon. Go buy some cards from cardtrader.com. Use code Roll for 5% off your order. And I'll see you next time.